Hey everybody, Kayla here, and I just poured myself a cup of tea and I'm reflecting on my lessons learned from selling digital templates in 2021. So like a lot of people, I think I made this new year's resolution to sell Canva templates, make passive income, finally do it, get into it, stop thinking about it in 2021. I had some successes, a lot of failures, and I just wanted to share my lessons learned, see what worked, and what am I doing in 2022 to hopefully make money selling Canva templates. I just want to apologize for the random backdrop. I'm spending the rest of the year in an apartment in Greece, and it's a one-room apartment. I don't have much control over the backdrop, so don't mind me in my random washing machine kitchen combo. So big mistake number one that I made was spending an unlimited amount of time in the design phase. So by the time you design, prepare, package, and publish your first digital product, that is really version one. You've just gotten the first version out. You're gonna have to make more versions. There's gonna be changes, mistakes, maybe edits. These are gonna naturally come. That will not be the version that stays up there forever. It's very likely that you'll have to refine it a couple more times before it turns into that like dream evergreen passive income source. It's going to take a little bit more work. And whenever you spend an unlimited amount of time in that design phase initially, you can seriously waste like six months and not publish anything. What if you just told yourself in one month, I'm going to publish it wherever it's at, as long as it's ready, you're going to hit publish, then you're going to be able to get to version two or three by the six month mark. Unlike if you had just spent an uncapped amount of time designing. That is a huge mistake that I think a lot of people make in the beginning. The sun came out. Bringing this talk outside. Okay, so I just shared failure number one from selling digital templates for a year. And now success number one was spending enough time on the deliverable. Now this is so similar to the mistake, which is spending too much time on the templates. But what happens after you've made the templates and you list them for sale? So somebody buys them and then they get what? That's the deliverable. And a lot of people will just make a link in an email, click here to download. But I think that there's a huge opportunity here that I found. I'm trying to film. I'm trying to film, guys. Instead of just sending a link in an email, I sent a PDF with help, so instructions. So if you need help, this is what Pinterest says, linking to Pinterest help articles, linking to Canva help articles, making it really clear where to go to get more information. And it didn't even have to be my information. I didn't have to rework the wheel. I just pointed them, made it easy, gathered the information for them, and then put it all with their templates so that they didn't have to look for anything. Okay, mistake number two for selling my templates was not focusing on my own website for selling. Now, you have a lot of options if you wanna sell templates. You can make your own website, you can sell on Creative Market, Etsy, and I spread myself too thin. Instead of just researching how to set up the best shop on my website, I did that. I researched WooCommerce, Shopify, Groove, Etsy. I went way too wide. I wasted so much time researching and then I spent a lot of time making Etsy listings and driving traffic there. And Etsy is not the place to drive traffic. It's your own shop because you don't own Etsy and Etsy kicks people off all the time. They shut down my shop for about six months for no reason and then apologized and said it was a mistake. You have no control and they won't talk to you about it whenever something goes wrong. If I had no shop of my own, it would have been the end of my whole business. Like that would have, or my whole like attempt at making passive income. It would have been completely devastating. Instead, it was just annoying. Okay, it was too windy outside. I'm back inside. That was failure number two, but success number two was way, way, way over delivering on what I offered customers. So I made templates. And in addition to the templates, I also made a workbook to help people come up with ideas for these templates. I also had an accompanying blog post that broke down all the pages and steps of this type of content. And I made a Canva 101 YouTube series to help people do like basic customizations in Canva. This was not a like professional tutorial. And to be honest, I think only like four people have watched them. Hi everybody, I'm Kayla from Running From Nowhere and you are probably watching this because you just bought some of my Pinterest templates. I included that on every single slide of the template, telling people, if you, do you need help? Here's some help. Here's ideas, here's an explanation, here's Canva 101 to help you with the tips. And on top of that, if they go through all of the resources that I laid out for them, I gave them my email and said, you can email me anytime and I'll help you. If you can provide that extra service, and now it does take extra time and passive income. I know everybody wants to be on the beach, disconnected from Wi-Fi with no, like, 
extra work having to go in, but that little extra of being available via email was huge for getting happy customers and people who were happy to share their experience of like enjoying their template purchase and i'm actually gonna jump out of order here and now lead right into success number three i'll come back to failure number three but success number three was mining customers for reviews so whenever i was uploading everything to my shop and etsy and doing too much at once i was also really worried about how do i get positive reviews it's so important but how do you get those how do you get people make people want to leave a positive review and i over delivered and i thought that that would be enough i thought that if i over delivered people would just naturally leave positive reviews and that was not the case reviews didn't trickle in on their own i started following up via email and asking people did you have a good experience and people said yeah love it oh my gosh whatever and then saying oh my gosh I'm so happy can you leave that as a review and crickets people just people are busy and it's just not a priority for them so I started building in mining for reviews into the process itself so I extended my deliverable that PDF that customers got and I added a page that said can I ask you a favor if you're happy would you please leave a review it would mean the world to me I framed it as them doing me a favor and then told them that as a thank you, I would give them free templates next time I updated my shop. So they already bought templates. They're already customers, but now I'm gonna give them a little something extra to say thanks. And that's whenever reviews started coming in. I built it into the deliverable. I put it in the notes side of Canva with all the other resources. So in the resources in Canva for those over deliverables, it went Canva 101, workbook, blog post, email address and then hey are you happy would you please leave me a review it would just mean the world and that's when the reviews start actually coming in and making a difference and now i have a shop with five star reviews and that is like the coolest feeling ever and it's still not a high turnover rate a lot of people buy and then don't come back to leave a review but at least i know that i catch people who are like really happy to share that experience so i really capitalized on that and wrapping it up with mistake number three that was only making one product and it might sound really obvious but it wasn't obvious when I was working through the process organically. I spent like a hundred hours or something, some stupid amount of time on these idea pin templates that I was only selling for $10 a pack. So it's not a big return <laughs> per customer. And then nothing was happening. Nothing was selling. Nothing was moving. And I thought that I screwed it up. I thought I'm not good at this. People don't like it. For the first six months, I think I made three sales and that felt honestly terrible. In hindsight, it's not hard to see why that happened, but I stopped. And if I had kept going, I would have made more sales by now because every product is like a bridge for people to find your shop. So whenever you make one bridge, if somebody's not searching idea pin templates, they weren't gonna find my shop. But what if I had 10 different times? What if I had Instagram template and eBooks? I would have maximized my traffic to my shop so much and I would have caught so many more people who were interested in buying. Instead, I made one product, thought it wasn't going well and hit the brakes and thought, am I gonna be an idiot who invests like another 200 hours in a shop that's not selling? And that was a huge mistake. Those are my big takeaways moving into the new year. I really wanna focus. 2021 I thought was like the year to make passive income with templates. I had some ridiculous goal of making like $1,000 a month by August. And I don't know what I was thinking. I think by August I made like three sales. These are the big three and I hope that they helped you or if you're trying to sell templates, if you're trying to get into this type of passive income, I'd love to hear more about this in the comments. Are you trying to make money this way? Is it something new on your mind? Is it something you've done successfully? And do you have any lessons learned to share with the rest of us? Thanks. <laughs> See if the videos attract some attention.